ഫിലഡൽഫിയ യു എസ് എ Uh, today we have come with a very interesting topic uh, exploring the journey of women archaeologists since independence a tribute to their significant contributions it is a very uh, very wonderful topic and uh, absolutely something worth exploring so i welcome you all uh, to the session uh, i welcome our person ms sahana ghosh uh, and our honorary president Uh, Mr. Nandan Shastri, sir. I also welcome the founder, vice president of the history enthusiast, Ms. Nidhi Katti, as well as all the guests and our dear uh, viewers. So, without any further ado, uh, since we are already running behind schedule, I request Ms. Nidhi to kindly introduce us. uh thank you manali thank you for giving me this opportunity uh, to introduce the uh, resource person uh, ahana ghosh is presently affiliated as a fulbright nehru visiting doctoral researcher at the department of anthropology uh, professor yes. kathleen d morrison is her faculty host and uh, academic advisor in the program ahana is a doctoral scholar and teaching assistant pursuing her research at the archaeological sciences center um, humanities and social sciences indian institute of technology gandhinagar under the supervision of professor sharada chanaraya patna uh, besides she is a student ambassador representing south asia at the society for archaeological sciences previously she was an early career researcher in the rewriting a uh, world archaeology program patronized by uh, durham university antiquity trust and the british academy ahana ghosh also held visiting researcher positions at the uh, ceramic resude analysis laboratory department of anthropology university of north carolina willing uh, Will uh, willington us Uh, and at the archaeological research laboratory stockholm university sweden uh, she also worked as a junior research fellow at the anthropological survey of india ministry of culture and uh, had been part of several national anthropological pro projects um, she uses scientific tools like uh, lipid residue uh, analysis and compound specific uh is to pay analysis to evaluate the ancient food processing practices of the harappan culture her work also focuses on the concept of the culinary landscape and different aspects of realities and representations of food ahana ghosh has been the recipient of several grants especially from the society of archaeological sciences and the federation of analytical chemistry and spectroscopy for conducting a substantial part of her doctoral research kosh has published her research in multiple reputed national and international journals and presented her work at several prestigious international conferences uh, ahana ghosh is also the founder member of the online research forum quest and uh, has been successfully leading a team for conducting online lectures and academic interactions since 2020 uh, it's a it's a privilege to have ma'am uh, on our uh, platform i would like to just mention some of her important publications uh, which can of course help the uh, researchers who will be researching on the same topics they can also contact our resource person after the lecture um from the cradle to the grave 
understanding food processing in the ancient Harappan uh, habitantial site of Dolavira in the burial site of uh, Dhaneti. Uh, and one more her yeah. is uh, organic geochemical and uh, paleobotanical reconstruction of a proto historic settlement in Eastern India. And many such papers have been. Uh, 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 wrote by her one, is one more related to gender issues is gender and landscape uh, Primus publication has published this paper so we will share the link of her biodata the scholars can go through it and thank wow. you so much uh, Ahana for accepting our invitation uh, it's a pleasure to have you uh, thank you so much for this wonderful interaction, the wonderful uh, uh, like introduction, Nidhi. I want to correct a thing that this is a paper that is season one, so it will be coming in two months in Primus. So it's on gender and landscape uh, in the Dholavira region. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share my research in this platform. And I am really happy to be part of this uh, the History Enthusiasts Association of History Enthusiasts, this Women's Day lecture. So happy Women's Day to everyone, not to the women and the men, like Manali said, who are all are supporting us to go equally, not in this field only, in the every aspect of our life. So we should go equally. I believe we, every day is a Women's Day, and we should be equal in in everything. So, so that, uh, shall I start? Absolutely, my, Ahana. Uh, uh, women's okay. Day is not just for women. Yeah, you can I, I, uh, I start with the uh, Yeah, so uh, this current talk, I, as I, I was discussing with uh, Manali and Nidhi before the talk begins, I want to keep it more interactive. I will uh, like, uh, like Nidhi and Manali to ask me questions and we also can discuss some of the current perspectives also. So now I should, uh, I will begin. So this, this talk, I, I will traverse the journey of women archaeologists in the post-independence India till, till now. And it will further delve into the divergent approaches of the women archaeologists in the field. It is a very crucial time, 1947, where when we are getting emancipation from the colonial rule. We are looking at total change of government machinery and the trajectory of archaeological research is changing and it is getting more institutionalized. And we can see the ri rising dominance of the bureaucratic bodies like Archaeological Survey of India, Anthropological Survey of India and different state archaeology departments, different uh, state, state and national universities are at having archaeology departments. So during the colonial period, as we have seen that under the struck cloak of the colonial farber and the there now we, we know there are several discussions about decolonization. This is a modern freedom discussion. So, so if you look at the colon, uh, colon, colonial period, we can see that how there are little representations of India, Indians in archaeological research. So we, if you go through the reports uh, during the colonial period, we can find that most of the research is done from the colonial perspectives and Indian scholarship is getting a very little place. So how this process is changing post-independence and especially for women. So this uh, in in this approach of male dominated undertakings like the post independence period we can see indian archaeology has seen of uh, like the rise of few professional female archaeologists doing explorations and excavations conducting across the country most and many of them also held significant uh, positions in organizations like archaeological survey of india and even as a professors in the universities making significant contrib contribution through their rigorous research techniques, some, sometimes following the positivist approach of scientific archaeology, or sometimes having their very independent, independent approaches. And so, and we can see a very, a, 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 a sphere of rigorous potential scientific temper and expertise is going up. So since the last few decades, 
this voices had been heard in the public platform through seminars talks and even in the public research but there had been very little communication about the personal experience of women acting as this team leaders in the field and uh, as i was uh, today going through different literatures and i am i am doing a little project on women women in archaeology and going through the literatures previously also i have saw, seen in especially in the south asian context there are very less narratives on the female archaeologists there are work on gender archaeology but the personal experiences of the women archaeologists what they are facing in the field what kind of equalities are they treated equally in the field what kind of background they are coming from and how how do their families are, are supporting them because this is i think you all are you who are all in the field you know this these are the very important factors and back in 1947 is it was a different factor so before going talking about getting into indian archaeology i should give a brief account of what was happening in the female contribution or the female archaeologists uh, about the female archaeologists worldwide so going back to the earlier days we can find the name of who was first referred as a female archaeologists uh, who have done excavation and exploration in iraq syria we can find names of like jert Gertrude Canton Thompson who has worked between 1888 and 18, 1985 then the name of Dorothy Garrett comes 1892 1968 who are also conducting excavation explorations in the middle east then we all know the name of Catherine Kathleen Kenyon who was the famous excavator of Jericho then comes uh, Honor Frost Mott Cunnington and who has all this uh, this lady mot cunnington she has contributed in the excavations along with her husband in the stone age which is a very famous english heritage and then we find uh, tessa verney willer the wife of famous mortimer willer she is she is also part of his uh, her, uh, her husband's work in several several uh, projects also and also one of the biggest excavation she has done independently though hiller was there was the maiden castle excavation and sadly uh, she passed away after this excavation so so now coming back to indian archaeology i have these are the few there are many names if you look but these are the few names that comes to my mind in world archaeology who are doing excavations in middle east going to a different land doing archaeology exploring excavating leading excavations even doing the administrative work so going back to uh, coming back to india back in 1975 dr debela mitro was india's first woman appointed director general of archaeological Sur survey of india so she joined uh, the survey of archaeological survey of india and worked for around the year 1952 and worked for the institution in various capacities until her retirement in 1983 so mentioning here there is a very uh, important work that has been done by, uh, by dr bishnu priya bosha associate professor calcutta university on dr uh, debola mitra's lives it's published in the by springer in a special edition of human archaeologist so it's a very nice uh, article on debola mitro's work her perspective what are the feminist per perspective she is working and how in the background of the patriarchy the post independent administrative system if and she has very nicely discussed that how uh, her work is she continued her work from those scientific forebore from the colonial era or she gave a very different approach to her work so talking about the the work of mitra dr mitra we should go into that uh, she has the first woman archaeologist and excavator and conservator of the buddhist sites mainly like jogada udaygiri khandagiri ratnagiri even the submerged temple of telkupi as west bengal the niti lora court and kodan nepal uh, kodan and the nepal tarai region so she has she is a woman who did excavation exploration documented the sites uh, very documented the sites and uh, had the method she mostly used was uh, willerian method of excavation and she she believed in literature 
uh, like taking reference from literatures but she believed in the assimilation of both literature and the scientific work so she used uh, even like uh, use a paleography she had took help of paleography and she docu she documented the iconographic features the structures so uh, so in in dr boshak's work i can we can find boshak as dr boshak has taken reference from different uh, of scholarships of debola mitro and she reflected upon that what kind of approach she has followed but in the conclusion dr boshak is right uh, writing that uh, she as uh, she has strongly follows that the process archaeological survey of india and the director generalship of dr amulananda ghosh was following the colonial process of documenting the documentation using text and assimilating them with the scientific approach there was there was not there was some individualized approaches were present but mostly she was following that institutionalized approach so if you can go into her journey uh she was an authority in buddhist monument and art and archaeology from eastern india a region incorporating west bengal and bangladesh and uh so this were very unquestionably associated with the virtues of masculinity hence her making a niche of herself was unique so there are many stories around her all her, her life and so going into her approach uh, we can find that she, there are earlier there are numerous images of buddha and divinities of mahayana and vajrayana pantheon reported through orissa but through her willerian method of uh, excavation she assessed the structures of this iconographies so as i mentioned earlier mitra relied on paleography to date the object uh, with dedicated inscription and she also followed uh, the uh, met accepted methodology of dating images using stylistic parameters a very common practice in indian art and historical studies and uh, interestingly she wrote uh, many uh, tourist uh, guide books which was uh, on bhubaneswar konark sachi and scholarly monographs which are mostly for increasing and encouraging tourism and looking into mitra's life and work it is very important during that time the post independence era a woman coming out of house going for higher studies in abroad taking training taking the leadership in a organization this this perspective is very important i tried to talk about her in very nutshell it's lot to talk about her i think it a lot to be a lot should be written about her work and so there are many scholarly published work of her but there should be lot from the the approaches she has used and if uh, like her, and if possible some some records of her personal narrative should also be addressed so uh now i i will talk about uh, a very i was going through a very interesting uh, interview by dr shirin ratnagar a fa another famous archaeologist in the harappa.com and once uh, in the interview she mentions that uh, she she was a student of deccan college postgraduate and research institute she is mentioning about her interactions with dr hd sankhalia the founder of deccan college she was mentioning uh, professor sankhalia as a very open minded person who never judged the her differentiated bit just and differentiated between the male and female students she never questioned what they are wearing where they are going so she gave he gave a very equal status to them so and uh, over the interview uh, dr ratnagar talks about her experience of work uh, studying in university college london back in those days and uh, she mentions that she was the only indian during the time studying in there not only a female the only indian then she went uh, to middle east like iraq for excavation and we we know her famous her this doctoral dissertation was mostly on the indus and the mesopotamian trade and she has published many famous books so this this was a journey she also talks about her family how her family was very open minded and how supported her in in the in this journey so 
these are few narratives we can find and uh, manali you want to ask something yeah yeah i uh, just wanted to like uh, uh, because you were talking about uh, uh, devala mitra and uh, uh, ratnakar ji uh, mm-hmm. it is uh, as i am a student of archaeology myself we only had mm-hmm. one paper on archaeology uh, and we did mm-hmm. study mm-hmm. some of the contributions of great archaeologists of india but we never came mm-hmm. across the name of women mm-hmm. archaeologists these narratives no. are completely missing from some of the archaeology uh, books that we are studying so uh, what do you think is the reason for that is it because they think that the contribution of women archaeologists are somehow inferior or is it just because it is socially acceptable to exclude women from mainstream narratives yeah this under as i was mentioning when i was doing a literature review this under representation is always there because we are finding about their narratives in in some interviews or or some of the in some bulletins published or written by someone but there is no compiled value, volume mentioning the women narrative so i think this under representation and this kind of social bias is always there because why why this topic is not nurtured only when the women say come we we may we do some sh- like streams do some programs talking about women so why not the why not throughout the year we should celebrate why should we should encourage the our like our we, we other women also so we should support each other also and we should come out with some of these volumes and other than taking some narratives from interviews a little tits and bits there should be a compiled bigger project that should uh, emancipate emancipate us from emancipate us from this under representation i i believe uh, i hope i have to address your question i i strongly agree with you in this yes sir please go ahead thank you uh, so you have to unmute yourself please so you are on mute Yeah. Am I audible? Am I audible now? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. hmm. yes sir. There is one important uh, publication authored by Purnima Ray and C. B. Patil, of uh, yeah. remembering star wars, biographical sketches of scholars from Archaeological Survey of India, published mm-hmm. in two thousand fourteen, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, some uh, important scholars, uh, uh, female scholars. have been mentioned in this uh, publication so these two authors have done wonderful work purnima ray and cb patil i sh- i i will surely refer to this sir surely thank you uh thank you sir i will surely me too so uh yeah i i, I was going through a bulletin of archaeological survey of india and it has made many appointed many female archaeologists since since the independence and some has gone to the joint director level superintendent archaeologists independently independently conducting excavations so women are the greater part and the greater force of archaeological survey of india as always but looking at their narrative from the feminist feminist archaeology approach and the gender archaeology approach is very important how the pattern is changing not uh, only writing about the contributions but also looking at the narratives the patterns how is changing throughout the decades i think it's important it's my personal opinion so uh, now i will talk to you about one another famous stalwart she is uh, dr malti nagar uh, so between the year 1962 and 65 she carried out ethnographic study of the rural populations in several villages of mewar uh in view of finding affinities between the sec- uh, second millennium bc ahar chakrutik culture and the present day rural culture of the area we know all know there is a famous ethno archaeological uh, archaeology award on dr malti nagar and uh, she has uh, been the par- uh, important part of the scholarship deccan college scholarship also and contributed immensely in the field of ethno archaeology so her study mainly concentrated on the villages around the site of ahar near the city of udarpur and rajasthan 
and some si 50 sites of ahar culture are known in the valleys of banas valley river and its tributaries she walked in in this purview area and so since 1973 she is, has been engaged on a project on the material culture uh, of economic organization of the tribal communities of peninsular india and during 1977 she made a study of material culture region and socio socio economic organizations of bones living in villages around the prehistoric site of vindhya densely forested vindhya hills in the raisen district of madhya pradesh so this are very important ethnological archaeology but looking again i am mention mentioning there should be a work on eth- malti nagar's uh, narratives on her work and her contribution what are the approaches she is taking in the, because during that time doing ethno archaeological work was not easy going to the communities as a woman and interacting with them because now it's also not easy you have to do you have to establish a kind of social relationship that people should accept you so how a woman is going to the field and i think there are very less work on malti nagar and then i will mention about uh, another stalwart is she, she is an anthropol sociologist from anthropologist so she is dr iravati karve so dr iravati karve is also part important part of deccan college and uh, pune university scholarship she so during her time she received the dakshina fellowship after graduating from bombay university with uh, she worked under dr g s kurue she researched her, on her own caste and her master degree thesis was titled as chit pavan brahmins and ethnic study her, and uh, she, for her pursu- for pursuing her highest uh, higher studies like the doctoral degree she she faced many fam- difficulties with her family but despite of that she went to uh, the germany uh, to st- uh, germany uh, in the institute of the kaiser wilhelm institute of anthropology to pers- to pursue her P- uh, phd so karve belonged to that generation of anthropologists who combined their knowledge of rich ideological tradi- traditions with anthropological approach she also later worked as an administrator of sndt women's university bombay from 1931 to 36 and at deccan college pune as a reader in sociology in 1939 at a time when anthropology and sociology were very developing and emerging field in india karve became the first woman woman to help the department uh, head of the found uh, to head, head of the department of sociology and anthropology at deccan college she was also the founder of anthropology department in pune university and later uh, she was also very well known marathi writer she also received the uh, sahitya academy award and she is she, she in her time she combined her knowledge uh, she combined the knowledge of reach indological traditions with anthropological approach her work on the origin of kingship is one of the greatest contribution in the field of anthropology of india so there are several archa- female archaeologists we can find in in this field and not only coming from the universities also coming from the archaeological survey of india i i should i should mention about uh, i should mention about uh, currently i should mention about dr arvin manjul who is very important part of the sanoli excavation and even the rakhigarhi uh, excavation part of co director of the rakhigarhi excavation and asi as a organization is also growing up and where female archaeologists there are employing female archaeologists also and then i should mention uh, one more person there are many uh, I, i i apologize for not mentioning is dr sonam spalzin she is the first women archaeologist coming from the ladakh ladakh uh, she is a native of ladakh and uh, she works in archaeological survey of india she is credited with the discovery of first ever mon- monastic bihara uh, established established in ladakh in the village of tang tangol in kargil the discovery is of great importance as it highlights the rules, roots of early buddhism in the area and dr sona has immense experience in nearly all facets of archaeology in particularly petroglyphs sculptures relating to the rise of early buddhism in jammu and kashmir region she has worked all over india attended conferences workshops and including uh, 
the her work uh, her interest in archaeology comes from the for passion for the love of his for her native land with the intention of creating uh, awareness among the youth to preserve very important archaeological heritage of ladakh she is working very uh, actively and as a custodian custodian of the heritage in the mountain regions of ladakh so i'll go back there i should there are a list of names that uh, i should mention uh, going to the field of the prehistoric research i should uh, definitely talk about dr shila mishra and her uh, contribution in the field of acheulean studies in india and then professor shushma deo her work associated in the paleolithic cultures of the khata prabha basin karnataka then currently professor shanti pappu the founder and secretary of sharma uh, center for heritage education who, who uh, and a former pre professor of prehistory in deccan college pune who, who has made an immense contribution in the field of prehistory and she is uh, currently continuing her unprecedented work in the in atirappakkam and and different parts of northern and southern tamil nadu her the projects include coordinating uh, teams of scientists from india and abroad and facilitating collaborative networks to address questions related to india's prehistoric part and she is doing uh, also a uh, like lot engaging lot of social uh, social pers- giving a social uh, contribution she has a lot of social contribution engaging children in archaeological research sharma heritage organizes lot of workshops i think this kind of initiatives are very important in in archaeology then i should mention about uh, dr veena mushrif tripathi coming from uh, deccan uh, deccan college she is she has immense contribution in the field of bioanthropology then uh, i should talk about uh, professor arti mukherjee desh pande she has she is uh, making immense she has made immense contribution in the field of zoo archaeological research so there are many more so now coming to the present pattern i should look uh, i should talk about that there are many organizations are coming up all over the world to discuss about archaeology so there is an association i don't know how many of you know association for association for early career women archaeologists and paleontologists so they organize a large conference every year only for women and this group is growing very strong and there are uh, several work now is going on not only on the contributions but what are the female archaeologists are facing what are the problems and issues facing in contrast of wages and employment and like even harassment so there are a lot of uh, work that are coming up and th- there are a lot of uh, foreign ar- uh, people who have uh, come from other country and made immense contribution to our country so i should mention my academic advisor professor kathleen morrison professor carla sinopoli professor monica smith and many more who has come from uh, another country and made may, and loved our land and made immense contribution to the archaeological research of our country so sometime i i had i have discussion with professor sinopoli or professor morrison about what's their experience 40 years back coming from a different country and landing in india so uh, as a share that initial days were always difficult because language were a bar- uh, biggest barrier but they they also believe there are male colleagues from india and even from archaeological survey of india who has supported them to do their work and so there are always always two different sides of the perspective one side we can see men are supporting women but in another side there we are seeing in l- lack of narratives coming into paper lack of lack of work from the feminist perspective and so uh, i am uh, i want to make uh, i want to make time for more discussions so looking into the uh, several uh, podcasts are going up several uh, in several the uh, online lectures are happening for only for the female archaeologists so i want to uh, so feminist archaeologist archaeology is not only about how a f- uh, female looks into the past 
and the contribution of the gender role in in past but also her own perspective is also important where she stands so here comes a question of biasness so this debate is always ongoing so and uh, i should end it uh, yeah. i should end it with a quote that uh, is by uh, janet a levy uh, her uh, she has written a wonderful piece of article it says what i believe doing archaeology as a feminist in the southeastern archaeology volume so she's an archaeologist working in south uh, southeast uh, southeastern part uh, southeastern archaeology so she has mentioned that in uh, contrast doing archaeology as a feminist does not require being either roman or post processualist rather it leads us to think about the social lives of the past communities as structured by cross cutting factors of work knowledge identity and environment it leads us to think about the implications of our proposed exp explanations for the lives of all types of people in the past community so i want to open for questions and discuss more through questions i don't know how i could address the topic because i got uh, i prepared in a very less time uh, uh, please apologize i sincerely apologize for being sketchy at some uh, point uh, no ahana indeed it was uh, uh, wonderful actually uh, you've covered almost all aspects and all different uh, fields of archaeology in which women are working today and have worked in the past and i uh, uh, and what you said at the uh, end of your uh, talk it is not just about the women who are part of our archaeology uh, that is the women we find in the archaeological narratives but also the women who create these narratives or who uh, create history by working in the field and their own perspectives uh, and it is uh, the, the perspective of a woman is markedly different uh, than a perspective of a man when you look at something Uh, because of our uh, uh, upbringing or our uh, socio economic values and uh, what not so uh, it is really important that we look at something from all the different perspectives and therefore a women's perspective counts just as much as a man's so definitely uh, the contribution of women archaeologists cannot be forgotten when we are talking about the contributions of archaeologists uh, as a whole and uh, i i want to ask the question here Uh, can you highlight some of the specific issues that women archaeologists face uh, at the beginning of their careers or even at later stages uh, such as if there are any bureaucratic uh, uh, you know uh, hurdles in their way something like that uh bureaucratic hurdles as per i don't know i am experienced but uh, during the early days uh, what i faced when i joined this profession there was uh, this social uh, you know it's rooted that if you go alone for excavation something will happen you are a woman you are vulnerable so th this kind of mindset sometimes creates a block and uh, so i don't think other than that anything is a problem if you are confident about what you want to do and if you know what you exactly want to do and if you plan accordingly everything will be come on you everything will be fine i believe so i see a scare unisers uh, comment yeah i i i should have mentioned uh, about uh, uh, as i i uh, yeah i i i apologize for not mentioning everyone i uh, i i read the book of dr sheena paja i followed her work so her work on the dynamic alluvial environment of the north uh, north uh, north Be northern bengal is very important it's one of the best books it it's uh, that has come up the work on the balipur and so it's a very important work in the perspective of going away from the mound archaeology and reflecting the site formation process uh, in the alluvial regions so i i should have mentioned so i apologize for not talking about everyone because it will take a lot of time so i i sincerely apologize sir in any any talk i will surely but uh, no, no. i do, i deeply re, i deeply respect uh, dr shina paja's work and i have i i am a avid follower of work when i was working in coastal area of bengal sir thank you thank you for the oh uh, ahana you
ट्रीब्यूशन्स सो going into that uh, i have uh, during my project and making some uh, interviews i have seen that uh, i think uh, the p- people the scholars and archaeologists i have interviewed they have all mentions there are certain things that give them advantage as a woman so they believe that uh, making some making connect at first it comes connecting with the people making social relationships in the area they are excavating that's a very immense contribution contribution because uh, they have they have seen that women are they can connect with the people more and uh, going to the perspectives uh, most of them has followed this villerian method of if we're talking about the excavators most of them has followed the villerian method of archaeology they have excavated except uh, i i found few exception also dr sheena praja she has looked very differently uh, going away from the mount archaeology concept the intertidal sites the and uh, also uh, another thing making uh, decisions also they think that making decisions also very they never faced any kind of prejudices prejudices and if you look at if you want to look into a very broader perspective perspective we should like take more study more narratives which i want to do my post phd that look into more narratives go into more interviews and look into the significant excavation methods significant experiences but there were not like any individual approach taken by them when i uh, some in some sco- i don't want to like mention names uh, because I, it will be going for publication soon so what's come pertinent uh, here that they have mentioned they have never seen the field as anything as male and female there is no thing a male or female everyone is equal so there is no female approach there is no male approach they have follows what need to be followed a pragmatic approach what need to be followed so though many believe they have connected well with the people of the village they in mentioning the administrative part social relationship but assessing the work or the narratives i i followed they believe that they have done what they need to do I'm sorry, sir. If I am not able yes. to address your question properly, I uh-huh. try my best. Ahana, I want to add here something. Uh, yes. Recently, I was reading about uh, uh, Kathleen uh, Terres. Uh, she mm. is uh, excavating uh, in Greece. She's an archaeologist in Greece. Uh, by profession, uh, uh, she was an advocate. She left her job and she became an archaeologist so her main mm-hmm. aim of the life is to find uh, the burial of uh, uh, the queen uh, cleopatra the last uh, pahora uh, of greece so when she was uh, excavating in front of uh, one of the isis temple because cleopatra used to always dress up like isis so her approach was that uh, uh, the cleopatra tomb will definitely be under any of the isis temple in uh, greece 
so that mm-hmm. kind of approach he was following there is a there is also a documentary on this uh, um, in uh, discovery plus so every 6 months uh, uh, in year every 6 months she gets uh, the slot by the government to excavate in uh, isis temple she does it and uh, during that uh, excavation she has found lot of other mummies and uh, whole new underground chamber many things so i think that kind of passion uh, may also be called as an approach somewhere uh, yes passion passion and confidence is very important in the field like uh, if you think from the beginning and you just take that male and female thing out of your mind and go ahead with your work i am a female just forget it and go ahead with the work and i think that's important so uh, i want to hear mention that a few days ago i was in a library in philadelphia and uh, and I, i i was going through dr margaret mead i have heard about a famous anthropologist her feel not diary it's a handwritten diary so i was were reading her like the diary and the drawings she has made during her ethnographic research the communities she is connecting with and it was very interesting to see the, the that early those days and how because those days computer was not much the internet and all one there so how people used to hand write to all hand do in writing and they used to do small small drawings of the area they are surveying how many people they like she has like made images of the pe- round out images this much of people i have surveyed today and they have given this perspective so it's very important so in in perspective of the research on female archaeologists of india i think we should go over their excavation diaries if available excavation notes i think and that may that, point to that their that may point yes yeah, that would that could be a very other than going to the lit- available literature on contributions yeah. we can go through the diaries that may help us understanding the approaches so it's this is a bigger project and right now i am collaborating in this project with my pro- doctoral supervisor professor sharda and we have just started the thought and informal discussions and interviews and in future we may come up with a broad project on this and we have to look into the different facets like diaries and uh, even the older newspapers how they are portraying women achievement of uh, women archaeologists and uh, even going you know, through absolutely. the newspapers i think this kind yes, of approaches are very important no no definitely because uh, looking at somebody from some uh, a third person's point of view and uh, looking at someone through their own writings and through their own eyes is a, a very different experience uh, in fact uh, may i ask a question here yeah please uh, like uh, as yeah, a point please. of discussion uh, we already know that there is some amount of disparity in numbers of uh, uh, men and women working in certain fields such as archaeology uh, what can be done to encourage more young girls to join a feel like archaeology because uh, as you might uh, you might have experienced and i have also uh, many people tend to say this that uh, you know archaeology is a very difficult field for a woman uh, standing in the sun for hours together and you have to do all the uh, physical labor of uh, i don't know they have some indiana jones kind of image of archaeology in their minds yeah so lara croft uh, is a- lara croft is in their mind lara croft in their mind yes <laughs> so they i think uh, they think of archaeologists as tomb builders or something uh, but uh, it in fact it is not like that uh, it is uh, mm-hmm. definitely not like that uh, there is a lot of uh, insight work there is a lot of requirement of uh, uh, not just the physical labor but also mental labor and uh, any woman can do it uh, just as good as a man can do it anybody can do it there is nothing about men and women here as you said but uh, the approach is not the same among lay uh, like those who are not experts in archaeology uh, will not think in that way so what can be done to encourage more young girls to join this field i think we should if they have interest from their childhood we should nurture their interest we should encourage the 
in this part of gender we should encourage the children that's why that initiatives like workshops for children museum visits these are very in, important uh and i think these are these initiatives are increasing in india these days having tool mapping workshops for children uh, this cave uh, rock painting workshops for children pottery painting workshops for children i think you have to nurture them so if they have interest i always believe we should fo follow the interests in what are the in what are their interests if they are interested we should nurture it i think every family should support and nurture them yes sir please on berkeley campus of a uh, university of california there is an institute called archaeological research uh, facility it mm -hmm. periodically organizes seminars mm -hmm. and webinars and there was mm -hmm. one interesting a uh, webinar attended by me on mm -hmm. female archaeologists in the united states and canada their mm -hmm. struggle their agony and their achievements it was mm -hmm. a wonderful uh, webinar and uh, uh, let me mention uh, one name uh, ratna ratnagar shari uh, yeah. from Shireen india yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. when uh, she was to visit uh, mahajadodo uh, mm -hmm. by air uh, mm -hmm. all of a sudden the weather became very bad and uh, uh, she requested the air hostess to to contact the pilot and mm -hmm. pilot said that uh, what is your profession she said that i am an archaeologist so in spite of uh, bad weather the pilot did favor to her so that shows uh, uh, the uh, brave woman who was determined to visit mohinder the uh, site mm -hmm. anyway so mm -hmm. Just yeah, I was, I was, I, I, yeah, I was also <laughs> reading this interview, and she landed in Manjadaro that way, and her yeah. experience also. It was fascinating. <laughs> yes. And they, the, and then she came <laughs> through the train back to India, and like she yeah. was very fear taken. <laughs> this is very interesting, yes. and how she uh, like contextualized with her experiences back in her university college London days. Oh yes. <laughs> and uh, it. <laughs> So mm -hmm. thank you, sir. Thank you for putting mm -hmm. this up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, indeed. And also holding discussions like these and uh, highlighting the works of uh, important, uh, not uh, like uh, women who have worked in the field will also encourage uh, young generations to join, uh, whatever the gender may be. Because uh, when you talk about the contributions of the predecessors, uh, they see how these uh, predecessors are celebrated in the field and that encourages them to join it so i think uh, hana you have done a wonderful job of highlighting the contributions of women to the indian archaeological studies uh, and I, also I, 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 I should have i should have taken more preparation i i, so I got a very little time next time I, i'll come up with the more preparation I, I i like to be honest in this case absolutely yes no we will uh, we will be very happy to host you again with the um, a little so bit more for the opportunity. So we can learn from you. Yes. Um, and I want to learn from you. I learn from you, and I want to interact with the more with the questions. And I learn. I want. I am a student, so I want to learn every day new facts. And I think this kind yes, of topics um, should be more in more the, uh, interactive than theoretical. Absolutely. There is that lot is of the, time for theorization, absolutely. but this should be more interactive. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, especially. Yes, uh, especially since the topic is such, uh, because it is not that much represented in mainstream uh, narratives, it is something open for discussion so that we can create mainstream narratives from this. So uh, I congratulate you once again. Uh, Thank even, you so much. Uh, even though you had very less time, uh, but you have come up with a wonderful uh, talk and uh, there were many uh, uh, aspects you. of it that uh, that will inspire uh, those who watch and uh, it was a great opportunity for us as history enthusiasts to connect from a research scholar uh, far from uh, far away from us and uh, uh, somebody who is working in the same field as us so uh, i uh, really uh, thank Thank you on behalf of uh, the entire history enthusiast team as well as our viewers and everybody who has joined us today thank you here. so much 
I request uh, I request Ms. Nidhi Katti to propose the vote of thanks. Uh, before Nidhi proposes formal yeah. vote of thanks, uh, let me thank uh, Ahana because in uh, North Carolina it is very late evening and she has not yet uh, taken her dinner. So <laughs> for our webinar, uh, she is so patient. Uh, uh, to go uh, to keep it's discussion. My, it's going. my pleasure to be part of this platform because I also run a flat little platform and I really want to encourage this platform which are growing and it should grow more. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nidhi. Thank you, Manali. Uh, yes, I thank take you this so opportunity. Uh, to do the vote of thanks. Uh, Hana Ghosh, uh, thank you so much for accepting the invitation and uh, opening up on this topic so that uh, many youths as well as uh, the experienced people can uh, understand the role of uh, female archaeologists because it's not there in mainstream archaeology books. Uh, that's why thank you so much and uh, we will continue collaborating with you and of course we will plan a collaboration with uh, your organization too we can do thank something you. it's like my pleasure it. it's my pleasure that we can have something jointly yes. uh, so thank you so much for thank being you. with us and happy day. women's day and celebrate women every day in each field and each sphere of life yes happy women's day okay. and i also thank uh, president honorary president of the history enthusiasts nandan shastri ji uh, for always being supportive to me and manali and for whole of the team uh, i also thank uh, president uh, founder president of the history enthusiasts miss manali momaya uh, for always supporting the new ideas uh, and together we are of course, uh, working for this organization. Thank you so much. And uh, stay Thank tuned. You. Next time, we will come up with a new initiative, new lecture, new idea. Thank you so much, everyone. I, I just want to put this out there. Uh, this uh, The History Enthusiast Association uh, was started by me and Nidhi during uh, lockdown. Uh, we are both young women. And uh, I must note this, that... Uh, despite all the uh, gender stereotypes and uh, discriminations that might exist in the world, uh, we have always found supportive people who have encouraged us. And uh, it is a wonderful, uh, it, it has been a wonderful journey so far uh, to see that so many inspired women are inspiring us and uh, uh, they are uh, supporting us and not just women. In fact, uh, in the beginning, uh, when we started, we had all people around us, uh, professors, our parents, our friends, uh, who include men and women, and who have always been of uh, who has all who have always been very resourceful for us. So, uh, happy Women's Day to all of them, and just remember, inspired women inspire women. So, uh, let's keep collaborating like this. Let's keep supporting each other and build a world uh, which has equity in it, which has equality in it, and uh, where everybody can flourish uh, together, grow together. Thank you all very much. And if Thank anybody wishes much. to present a book review on our platform, uh, yes, uh, if anybody wishes to present a book review on our platform uh, or share a part of your research, uh, we are always happy to host. Uh, kindly contact us. We have uh, put our email ID in the description. Uh, you can email us anytime. You can follow us on our socials and you can DM us there too. Thank you all very much. Thank you. So we will be signing off here. Yes.